Alright, Tim Estrella here, Pickup Truck Plus SUV Talk. I'm in a semi. It's not a regular semi. It's a hydrogen fuel cell semi from Toyota. Driving, we just left the port of Long Beach, driving the port of Los Angeles, and uh, we're cruising along. This is an electric powertrain with hydrogen fuel cells. So, if you notice something, you don't notice the noise. And we have 1,275 foot pounds of torque, 650 horsepower. We're at 40,000 pounds. We have a trailer behind us and we're just cruising. Um, it's a phenomenal technology. Toyota's using it throughout their lineup with my man, Danny. Danny, who used, hey Danny. Uh, he used to uh, work at these ports. He's been here his entire life. And uh, you know, he understands it. And it's phenomenal to be able to drive this around, come off the line and have the power to beat these either diesel trucks, keep up with traffic and just have a smooth, quiet ride for a semi. So I'm going to show you some other video. We're going to talk about uh, fueling it up and I'll have some more. So stay with us as we talk about the Toyota Hydrogen Fuel Cell Semi. Project Portal is the word. Project Portal. This is Toyota's port system where they bring in the vehicles and ship them out. This is also where the Hydrogen Fuel Cell Semi is parked every night. It's where it gets fueled up during the day. It's where it operates from. It's been operating now for months, moving cargo around the ports with no problems at all. It really fits into the port system. You will also notice it's got an electric powertrain that's hooked into hydrogen fuel cells that are behind the cab. That's how it works. So it has a battery. As the battery runs down, the hydrogen is expended, creating energy which recharges the battery. You also notice it's a very quiet ride. As you're driving around, it's almost bizarre how quiet it is. Okay, pickup truck and SUV fans, I'm back in my home office. Let's talk. Let's, let's break the video, take a time out, and let's discuss, because there's a lot of pros and cons, a lot of controversy about hydrogen fuel cells. I thought it'd be great at this time to kind of go over those. So, you know, I'm excited about it. I want to get to why I'm excited about it, but I want to get to first... The cons, the things you're hearing. So number one, the problem with hydrogen is no, no infrastructure. It's not built. There's nothing in the country really for infrastructure. California is putting in like 200 stations. Um, there's some movement in Japan to do hydrogen. Europe is doing a lot more hydrogen. So it's coming, but it's not there. It's going to be expensive. To put a hydrogen fuel cell compressor set up at a fuel station is going to cost quite a bit of money. And uh, so it's, But I want to get to the, the pro on that and why that's probably not a big enough issue as you think it's going to be. Uh, price, my goodness, they are obscenely expensive. So right now, Toyota has a hydrogen fuel cell car in the market. It's called a Mirai. That thing starts at fifty-six thousand dollars. Yeah, it's really expensive technology. There's a lot of costs involved in creating the fuel cells, in creating technology, and and getting there. Also, price filling it up, price of per gallon. Right now, I heard a guy just spent sixteen dollars per gallon filling it up. The state of California expects. 12 to 14 happening in the next couple of years. They're hoping to get down to eight by like 2025. Toyota's hoping by like 2030 or so to be down to $3 a gallon below diesel. So it's really expensive right now. It's really expensive new technology. It's a big con. There's no way around that. Uh, long time development. I've heard this from a few people that, you know, fuel cells aren't new. They've been around for decades. Toyota engineer I was just talking to in California, working on for 20 years. They've been refining it. They've been making it smaller. They've been making it better, more efficient. So it's a long time in development. So um, I don't know if that's a con. Some people think it is. Uh, it, you definitely have pipe dream argument. Um, pollution. The final point of pollution is that hi creating hydrogen currently happens at coal-fired coal uh, coal plants, <laughs> if I can speak this morning, um, natural gas plants. And so you do have pollution when you create the hydrogen at those places. So th there's... That's a con. There's, there's no way around that. Plus, you have a battery. As we know, with electric vehicles and battery electric vehicles, there's pollution when you create the with, create the battery. So, there's no way around that. But let me get to let me get to maybe the way around that. Let, 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 let's go down that road. So, no infrastructure. Let's start with that first. Um, natural gas lines run across this country. They they're all over the place. And so, there's actually companies that are building portable and smaller hydrogen creation like plants that can hook up these natural gas lines. So you can actually put natural gas creation plants throughout the country and so you can really create that infrastructure a lot faster than you think you will and they can bring it in as you'll see in the video they can bring it in a flatbed semi in a big container and have liquid hydrogen right there 
And so the, the infrastructure is an interesting argument. Um, it's going to be a huge price as far as installing those pumps at, at, at the gas stations. No, no way around that. However, that's why I like Toyota's approach on this. They start commercial. Commercial semi uses a lot more fuel than a consumer car does. If you can get the fleet owners on board, you can get the fleet companies that want supply of hydrogen, you're going to really accelerate supply. You're really going to accelerate Shell and Exxon and Mobil and all the big companies getting involved. And by the way, oil companies are involved. Shell partnered with Toyota and built the first hydrogen fuel cell station outside of in California. There's one in their offices. I was like, literally drove by it. It has Shell. It says hydrogen. You know, I mean, why wouldn't they be behind it? That's an interesting argument to me because they know people are going to want this and they want to be able to supply it to them. That's their job, supplying fuel. And so if customers want hydrogen, Shell's going to be there supplying it. I mean, why won't they? So um, I'm also excited about, and I'm going to get the price a little bit, but I'm excited about this is the first time I've ever seen an alternative fuel source work in a full-size application. I know there's the bolt fans, there's the, I don't know what little electric cars there are. Um, they don't work for me. I live in the country, they don't work. It, it's You got to put a 220 in your house and put it in the garage and charge them overnight. And then if you don't have that option, let's say you live in a city, you got to drive to the nearest charger and plug it in overnight and then come back in the morning. I mean, six, seven hours to charge, not a fan. Hydrogen works in semis. And if it can work in semis, folks, it can work in full-size trucks, full-size SUVs, mid-size SUVs, all the way down to the small car. And they're working on fueling t station times as far as fueling up to be about three minutes. The Mirai fills up in three minutes, which is pretty similar to what a gasoline engine will or a diesel engine will um, as far as um, empty to full. So, And they can put it at gas stations. So it fits your lifestyle. You don't have to put an extra 220 in your garage. You don't have to put a high charging uh, cord and cable. You don't have to deal with any of that nonsense. You just drive the gas station filled up and you can actually have a hydrogen fuel cell gas can. I asked about this. You can have a little can. So if you run out of fuel, you can get put more in the car. No range anxiety. No, none of that nonsense. Um, let's talk price. Price is really expensive right now. Like I said, the Mirai is $56,000. A Prius is 23000 23 to 30000 A Camry is 20000 to 30, depending on your trim level. So really expensive. Toyota is working on this. According to the story, eh, it was two days ago. They're going to start building hydrogen fuel cells themselves in Japan. They're creating a factory. They're going to create more supply of the hydrogen fuel cells. And once they can mass produce those fuel cells, they should decrease in price. I remember I reading, I don't know, three, four months ago, they were talking about making the price of the hydrogen fuel cell car, the Mirai, about the same as a Camry. That's their goal. That's a stated goal. And Toyota's pretty good about making goals. So I think that price is going to come down. What gets me excited about this technology also is fuel economy. So uh, there's been some discussion about semi, whether you get fuel economy or not, and, and they don't really know because they haven't done any fuel economy trips yet. But uh, you look at some of these numbers. So the Mirai gets 66 miles per gallon, the Prius gets 54 miles per gallon, and the Camry, the best it does, is like 33 miles per gallon. Okay? So if they can get the Mirai price down to more comparable to the Camry, they can build up supply where it's about $3 a gallon, which is more consistent supply because it'll be from multiple sources, which I'll get to in a minute, and you get double the fuel economy in versus in the small cars. It probably won't do the same with the Tundra, but it could be a substantial increase in fuel economy. It could be there. Um, I, I do want to get to the... What was I going to get to? Oh, the, more people building it, so getting supply down. So Nikolai is building a fuel cell semi, so is Toyota. Once the commercial fleet companies get involved, they're going to really drive supply. And it seems like there's a lot of fuel economy benefits. It seems like it works off-road. It can work all different places. And it's actually working right now today. If you go to any major warehouse, you will see some hydrogen fuel cell forklifts. No pollution inside. They don't, you know, they don't, I'm going to get the pollution. That's what I was going to get to. <laughs> um, it, you don't have the pollution inside. You don't have the, the gases. And it works. It's a you drive over, fill them up. Keep going. You don't have to wait for the charge. You don't have to wait for it to, you know build the battery up again. You don't have to pour gasoline into it. It just it it works. And so this is a technology that's been proven to work in different applications. And as you're seeing in the video, Toyota's been doing this semi, driving the semi for months now, with no problems. So, but let me get to pollution. Let me get to pollution. Um, so as I said in the con, you do have pollution when you create hydrogen. You do it natural gas facility. It creates pollution. What's cool about hydrogen though is you can create it from natural gas from coal from solar, 
from methane gas, uh, cow poop, and dump. There's a dump over there. Um, in the distance, I can't see it. Um, you can create it from hyd uh, hydropower, so it can create it from um, water-powered, you know, power plants. So you can create it from many different places. It's like it's the second largest uh, natural occurring element in the world. So it's out there. It's right there. You just got to grab it. You boil it down to hydrogen. In the case of the infrastructure demands, you make it liquid or you make it gas. Doesn't really matter. You put it in the vehicle. It burns. It charges up the battery. Bam. It doesn't burn. It has a chemical reaction that charges the battery, and you have a, a full battery again, and you're emitting water va vapors. Oh, and last point, I just remember this, top of my head, is that there's some thought that it'll explode if you fire something at it. Search. There's a YouTube video, Toyota fired a 50 caliber tank of uh, ammunition at a Mirai hydrogen fuel cell. You know what happened, folks? Created a hole. Gas ex expended. There's no problem there at all. So, I mean, I'm pretty bullish on it, which is which is crazy to me. I'm all accounts. I'm an EV rejector. That you can call me EV rejector. I don't like them. Uh, the the battery electrics. I've never seen them work in a full size application. And I'm sorry, I'm not going to drive little small cars the rest of my life just so I can get better fuel economy. That's boring. But I like pickups. And if you're going to tell me that I can get uh, better fuel economy, I don't have the oil changes, all the maintenance. I don't have. I, I mean, don't have all the uh, pollution going out my tail pipe. Type. I can maybe even create my own fuel source if I have a big enough farm to create the solar power or hydrogen power or the methane cow poop of my own. Um, it's a pretty exciting technology. I think it's future tech. I don't think it's anytime here soon. We do have some cons. We get some pricing infrastructure. Toyota's building the world's largest, as they call it, uh, hydrogen fuel cell um, fueling station. It may not be the world's largest. There's some controversy about that. But they're talking about it's going to service 2,000 semis a day. That's going to be in the ports. And think about it, folks. If it works in the ports of Los Angeles, Long Beach, why wouldn't it work in the ports of Seattle and the ports of Washington, D.C., the ports of New York City, New Jersey, and Miami, and or all around Florida, not Miami, the coast. It works on the coast, right, where the, the ships come in the dock. So if they can work it there, if they can make it work there, they can work it work all around the country. And if you're a fleet owner, this could be a big, big thing. Okay, so let's get the infrastructure. Here's the rest of the video. I will stop yapping at you. And uh, let me know. Hit subscribe, uh, comment below, tip at pickuptrucktalk.com for all your hate mail. Please send it. I'm learning as much as you're learning. This is new to me. I'm sure there's more cons that I missed. Uh, let's talk about it. Let me, let, let's do some research. I'm, I'm really excited about it. I've done a lot of research myself, but I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I'm missing. And uh, thanks for watching. All right, here we are in the Port of Long Beach. We just got done driving the hydrogen fuel cell semi project portal. This is the big news here, I think, with this vehicle is that it, it drives well, it, it's smooth. You don't have any of the herky jerky off the line, but it's fueling, it's infrastructure. This is what's going to make or break this product. And we're going to talk about how it connects. It's just a quick connect going in. But this is the mother load. This is what we're talking infrastructure. This is a three compressor system. We have liquid hydrogen over there, it turns into a gas, and the gas goes into the truck. We're going to build the structure, it's going to be like in gas stations. If we can build this, then we're pretty much limitless on how far we're going to take this technology, how far we're going to take this truck. And so it's mind-blowing that this is all we have to do.